5889 by sub substitute A2 by Representative Codia is an act that will, will allow, it would establish within the state temporary disability insurance program a temporary caregiver program to provide benefits to workers to take time off for a seriously ill child, spouse, parent, parent-in-law, grandparent, domestic part partner, or a bond with a new, or to bond with a new child. This act, the money that comes from this act comes from employees that actually pay into the TDI system. It does not cost any of our businesses anything. In other states that have had this um, TDI program, they have found that it has actually saved employers money. For example, California saved $89 million a year thanks to this particular uh, TDI, TDI program. The family insurance programs in New Jersey and California have increased employee retention and have actually saved business owners money. It's a very, very important piece of legislation for families. It, does a, it, it makes families stronger, which is something that we want to see in the state of Rhode Island. And for those reasons, Mr. Speaker, the, the um, House Committee on Finance recommends passage, and I move passage. Chairman Gallison moves passage of the act. Second by Representative Lijewski, Representative Abney, Representative Shikachi, Representative McLaughlin, Representative Bennett, Representative Hull, Representative Guthrie, Representative Ferry, Representative Norton, Representative Cordia, Representative Tansy, Chairwoman Williams, Rep Chairwoman Nigella, Representative Valencia, Representative Ackerman, Representative O'Grady, Chairwoman Williams. It's been moved and seconded. We do have lights. Representative Costa on the act. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Proceed. Um, may I ask a question of the chair, please? Will the chairman yield? He will yield. Proceed. Thank you. Rep. Gallison, I just have a quick question. On page 1, line 6 and line, and line 11, it says newborn child, and then on the page, line 6, it says new child. It says new, newborn up to one year of, of age. Is that a mistake? Because I've never heard of a newborn being 12 months old. The, the definition of a newborn is um, from birth to 28 days, and from 29 days to one year, they're considered an infant. So yeah. is that a mistake, sir? I do not believe so, because I can believe it could be a, a, an adopted child. Newborn, though? It says newborn. Newborn child, child. Uh, on, pay, on, on line 11. Page one, line 11. I just want to clarify that the, um, the definition of a newborn child is 28 days. A new, uh, uh, I, I, I'm, you looking at the amendment A2? Because on A2 it says newborn child means a child under one year of age. I understand that, but a newborn child, so you're redefining the word newborn, correct? I mean, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm just trying to figure this out. I understand. According to this definition, under this particular piece of legislation and this legislation only, Okay. It would mean a child, a newborn child under the age of one year. Okay, that's just, a, that's just very misleading, but thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative. Representative Nunes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also have a question of the uh, chairman, if he'll yield. Chairman, he will yield. Proceed. Uh, I, I was just reading this, the bill again, and it's, it's a little unclear to me on how they're going to implement uh, implement this program with respect to, uh, I'll just give you a hypothetical situation. Let's say there's a, a domestic partnership and one parent goes out on the uh, uh, caregiver provision of the TDI program. Uh, what, what, how are they going to ensure that the other parent doesn't go out on the same program? So then you would have both parents out taking care of the one one sick child we'll say if if the the individuals are paying into the TDI system if they both go out they are both eligible to collect TDI okay so, they so could you go could, out they could go both out at the same time for up to four weeks so you could conceivably have an entire family of people go out because there's one sick family member if, it's, if need be, that's what the purpose is, because to, to protect and to care for that, that individual that is sick, maybe sometimes you might need two people out. And it's only up to four weeks. So would that, that, wouldn't, be, that wouldn't fall under the fraud and misrepresentation section of this uh, 
Well, yeah. under fraud, they, certainly they would have to provide the, the proper documentation to, 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 the, uh, to uh, the CDI program. All right. Uh, I, understand I, what you're, I understand what you're saying. It, it, looks, it, it sounds like it could be uh, abuse, but I don't believe that if someone is sick and someone, a child or a or, or family member that is ill that may need two caregivers, this allows them up to four weeks to, to collect on the TDI in which they paid into the system. Right, but the law does provide for that in its current state. Is that basically, I mean... Well, this is for, the, the law may provide for that, but this is only for caregivers that provide, so it's a change in, or an extension of the, the current law. I mean, it, it just seems like it's setting, a, setting, setting up a program that, that could easily be abused in, in that way. I mean, I, I, the, the way the current system is set up, it's, it, it doesn't allow for somebody to go out to, to care for a loved one. And I understand how, how, how crucial that may be, it, depending on a, a certain situation in somebody's life, they may have a, a loved one that they need to care for. But, I mean, you could, you could easily see how a, an entire family could go out under the provisions of this chapter, and uh, where it, that, that could be, I mean, you don't, you don't see a problem with that? Again, it's only up to four weeks if that, if that needs be. I mean, you know, I, I can I could certainly uh, have some situations that I could think of where that would be necessary, and then I could think of situations where maybe a husband or wife or, or, or domestic partner, where one may want to go out four weeks, one may want to go out another four weeks. I could see that happening, you know. But but there could be a situation where someone is so ill that they need that that you know that care for that that amount of time, those four weeks, to get that individual you know, the assistance that need, they need. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it, b b because of that issue and, and some other issues with this, uh, with this bill, Mr. Speaker, uh, it, it, it's the TDI tax in this state is a, is a very regressive tax because it affects, it, it doesn't matter how much you make it, 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 it attaches a percentage to that, that, that this tax, each employee pays into this 1.6% uh, no, it's 1.2% it's of the first $61,000 in wages. And this is going to bump it up to 1.4%. So if you're making, say, $20,000 a year, you're, you're, you're paying into this thing the same amount as, or if you're making $61,000 a year, you're paying into this the same amount as somebody who makes $260,000 a year. So th this disproportionately affects the lower income work, uh, lower wage earners in our state. And by increasing this to include uh, TDI benefits for uh, temporary caregivers, we're, we're increasing that burden on, on a lower income population. And uh, I just can't support it. But based upon that, uh, some other issues with it, as well as the cost of the employer, due to they're going to have to find somebody to temporarily fill in these positions for four weeks. So. They're going to have to train somebody for a short-term position. It's going to cost them, whether we want to say it or not, it's going to cost seconds. the employer money. So it's going to cost our constituents money, who, who may or may not make a decent living. It's going to cost the employers money, and it could easily be abused. I mean, I, I, see the, I think the intent behind this was a great intent, but it, this, I think it needs more work. It should probably be recommitted and, and maybe come back next next session because this I, I don't know if it's really ready to, for the floor at this point. Thank you, Representative. Thank Representative you. Kodiak, sponsor of the bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. To Representative Nunes, <clears throat> first of all, this benefit does allow you 50% of your income. I'm not sure in two-parent households you're, we're trying to give someone a person who can stay with someone who's terminally or very ill. I don't think both parents could afford to pay the bills, buy the medicine, pay for food and the mortgage, and take the time out together. Should they be able to, and they're both members of the TDI system, it allows for it. Furthermore, I know we've heard many times through many of the hearings how onerous this is to small business. The city of Pawtucket is a city of small businesses. I have 18 letters from business owners thanking me for putting this bill in. They say to me this, and one gentleman wrote a two-column two 
op-ed piece in the paper because they said, with the leave, after high, going through the hiring process, the training process, and getting the person up and working, it would help for retention. There is no reason the person has to take the four weeks set once. And it's certified by a medical provider that the illness meets the criteria. There is also about three quarters of a page of fraud that um, statutes we've put in. It has to be certified by a healthcare perfecta, per, uh, professional that the illness qualifies, and then there are fraud protections. I also, Mr. Speaker, at the proper time, do have an amendment which... Um, Now's the time, Chrissy. An employer may require an employee who is entitled to leave under the, family, the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act or the Rhode Island Parental and Family Medical Leave Act who exercises his or her rights to benefits under the Temporary Caregiver Insurance Program under this chapter to take any temporary caregiver benefits received concurrently with any taken pursuant to the Federal Family Medical Leave Act or the Rhode Island Parental Family Medical Leave Act. We have the, oh, the LC number. The LC number. 02024-2. Representative Codier moves amendment, passes amendment LC 02024-2, seconded by Representative Norton, Representative Tanzi, Lena Mattiello, Chairwoman Agello, Representative O'Brien, Representative Bennett, Representative Hull. Any further second? And Representative Diaz, I apologize, Representative Diaz. It's been moved and seconded. Expl I think you read it, but explanation. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. We're trying to make sure that it's fair to the employees, the employers, and we've got nothing but good feedback, especially from so small business people who are concerned with the hiring process that takes time and money, retention, and training. And they feel this is something they can handle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Codea. It's been moved and seconded. We do have Representative Morgan on the amendment. There are no lights. Shall the amendment prevail? Clerk, please unlock the machine. All those in favor, green. All those opposed, red. Clerk, please lock the machine. 67 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. The amendment prevails. We're back on the act now as amended. Whip Trillo on the act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. You know, one of the things that concerns me is when we, when we put stuff on legislation that wasn't intended to go there. Temporary disability was designed for the individual employee who becomes sick to collect temporary disability. That was the purpose behind it. Now, while I think it's admirable that we protect people who have people that are, that are sick or whatever to be able to take time out of work and take care of them, I don't believe it should ever get tagged on to the existing TDI bill. I think it should have been put in as a new, t as a new fee to come out of everybody's pay every week. Call it uh, health care providers or home health care, call it something. But why would we call it TDI? TDI has a purpose. It's only to protect the employee. With that said, any time we go after the, the employees' wages and, and even take the small percentage that we're taking out of them, I'm concerned about it. But this particular piece of legislation, because it doesn't have any guidelines in it, I could conceivably take time out of work, let's say if I had a parent that was severely ill, and everybody that works at one time or another has people that are severely ill. So let's say that I have six brothers and sisters and, and they have children. This bill, if we pass it right now, 50 people could take advantage of it to take care of a grandfather. Four weeks you take care of them, four weeks you take care of them, four weeks you take care of them, and, and it's just wide open, wide open for abuse.
The, the, the other thing that I'm concerned about is we're putting the responsibility to police this on whom? Uh, which department? Department of Labor? Yeah, I mean, are they equipped to police this? DLT. Yeah, labor and training. So are they equipped to police this? I mean, can you imagine the thousands and thousands of people that will be using this benefit? It's a great benefit, but it doesn't belong as part of TDI, and, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to do it at 0.2%. So I, I really think this needs a lot of drafting, a lot of redrafting, a lot more thought that's going into it, and I will not be supporting it. Thank you. Representative Morgan on the act. Proceed. I'm going to ask you all to vote against this, and not because it's not a nice idea. It is. We're trying to help people, and I get that. But this year was supposed to about, be about improving our business climate here in Rhode Island, about helping our businesses, because nothing is more important to families than having good jobs, having their children be able to get good jobs when they get out of high school or out of college. And right now we don't have that in Rhode Island, and we need to work on our business climate more than we need to work on being nice. There are only five states right now that mandate TDI. We're one of them. And we overuse it. I don't think we're a, an unhealthy place to live, but New Jersey, which also mandated, mandates TDI, only has 3% of their employees use the program in a year's time. Here in Rhode Island, we have 9%. Something is out of whack. And those 9% are using it an average of 11.4 weeks on average. Well, you can only take 12, so clearly people are kind of pushing it to the very end. We need to do a study first on why we overuse TDI before we start expanding it. It's a nice program but it hurts employers. How does it hurt employers? Well, lost productivity. When you lose an employee for four, six, eight, 11 weeks, there's a hole in your workforce. If you're big enough, maybe you can move people around to cover that hole, that productivity. But not all of our companies can do that. They try to bring in a temporary temporary help or they just do without. We lose productivity. They are not taking in the orders. They are not pushing out the product. Not as well as if they have a full workforce. This is the year that we said we would focus on our economic climate. And I got to tell you, I'm really disappointed that some of our, our larger pieces of legislation haven't made it to the floor yet because I think they were really good ideas. I think they would have helped. But if we can't bring those here, let's not hurt our business climate. We need to get people back to work. That's the most important thing for families. Not expanding TDI. Thank you. Chairman Handy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm glad I got to go uh, next after Rep. Morgan, and I, uh, I, I certainly um, know how sincere she is about working to protect our business here, here in the state. But I, I do want to reflect on if we really do want to work on, on our economy, we can't just do the businesses. I know they are the ones that are providing those jobs, but we do need to think about the, uh, the folks that are working there as well. And I, I don't know that we've done a whole lot in that category. I think this is a, a good step in that direction. I do want to also remind folks that, again, productive workers are the workers that are going to know that they have to, don't have to worry about somebody that's at home, maybe having a caregiver that they don't know a lot about, and in the end that they're also not needing to spend that money in that, that, that equation, hiring a nurse's aide or something like that in the end. I, I, I think this is a good act, Mr. Speaker, and I, I urge everyone to support it. Thank you. Chairwoman Magello. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members of the House, to, I too rise in support of this legislation. I work in a very small business, about 11 employees full time. And in the past year or two, we, we had one of our employees out with a broken leg for the 12 weeks. Um, in that time, everybody chipped in. Everybody did a little more than they normally did. So we got all the work done. There was no loss in revenue for the business. And because of TDI, that individual was able to recover without going deeply into debt. And my employer didn't feel badly that that individual was unable to work and having no income to support his wife and child. I think this is good for business too, for those business owners who feel responsibility for their employees, want their employees to be able to get their feet back on the ground and get back to work. I think this does this for individuals who are part of families and want to help take care of their families. And Representative Trillo spoke a little while of a very large family with, I don't remember how many children who all might want to be taking their four weeks of um, family TDI care to take care of that one grandfather. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Four times 10, that would be 40 weeks that each member of that family actually could spend time taking care of of that senior citizen in perhaps their last years. I think this is a really good idea, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Representative Morgan. I think losing 40 weeks of productivity from our business in climate would be horrible, quite frankly. Again, it feels good and I get that, but it would be bad for our business climate. I've actually spoken with some of our larger manufacturers, um, the ones that are making the widgets and making the things that they sell, right? Um, and they are all opposed to this because it puts a burden on them to try to fill those manufacturing positions. We need to be helping our business climate. And this is one, this is a step backwards Ferry. Thank you, Speaker. I, I don't see it as we're going backwards. I'm a business person, and I signed on to this bill because I think it's a good bill. You're talking about probably, like Representative Noon says, lower income people. Incomes for that group of people hasn't been growing. We talked about minimum wage. There's a lot of people close to that minimum wage that are trying to make a living working two, three, maybe four jobs. I know a family who does that. The husband's working day and night. The kids are working. They're all trying to pitch in, but it's a lot hotter now than it was when I was 17 years old. And I could, I could make it and help put money in. Um, a lot of the people we're talking about have no sick leave. I mean, I had a mother-in-law for five and a half years was an invalid and wanted to stay at home. And we had to do something to keep her home. It takes a lot of money to do that. And we didn't have this. If we had this, some of the family members could have taken and shared that. They could have taken four weeks at a time and shared that care to leave her at home. This is what this is about. And we don't have, most of the companies in Rhode Island are small business, small business. Five, six, seven employees, ten employees. Right. I mean, I had a, an employee who went out of work because she had a hysterectomy. She was gone six to eight weeks. And we worked it out. We worked it out with all my employees, and we all pitched in. And that's what we would do in this situation like this. Now, there's something about fraud. If this is fraud, the employer is going to know it. We're going to know if it's fraud, and we're going to make sure that we take care of that. But on the, I don't think that's going to happen for the most part. There will be a small percentage who try to get away with things. Why, there's millionaires who try to get away with tax breaks they shouldn't get away with. I think this helps business. I think this helps families because we need to do things to strengthen families. We have families because they work in two, three jobs, they don't have dinner together on, at nighttime. They don't have Sunday dinner anymore. 
because they're working 20, 12 hours a day and they, they have to work night shifts, day shifts, and whatever. And I support business and I'm doing my part. I've gone to every economic summit that we've had this whole session because I want to make sure that we strengthen business in Rhode Island. And I've done that and I've been working on it. But I think something like this helps families and in the long run helps businesses because my employees can feel good about what they need to do and they don't have to be worrying at work because at least they're going to get some help. It's only some help. I'm sorry, but as a small business person, I think, I don't know, I'm not apologizing. This is a good bill. Please pass it. Representative Tansy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We've had some people speaking against this bill talking about what a burden this is going to be on small businesses. But how productive is an employee whose mind is on a sick family member? Someone who spends all night at a hospital by that child's bedside, who then has to go take care of the rest of the family, get them off to school, and then report to a full day of work for themselves. How lucky would they be if during a time like that, both parents could take some time off to share that burden so that the children who may be at home get the attention that they deserve and that they need, and they're able to report to work when their mind is there. This is an important piece of economic development. I think this helps productivity so that when people are at their jobs, they're fully engaged in their jobs and they're able to take care of their families at the same time. I urge you to support this bill. Thank you. Representative McLaughlin. I'll make this short, Mr. Speaker. I ask everybody in this house to support this bill. I've got a, a, a caretaker, a uh, young man, his name's Jose. He works seven days a week, okay, landscaping, businessman. His, his mom just recently, well, uh, she's had a lot of problems, but uh, she wound up in hospice. This kid, landscaping during the day, wants to be attorney at night, okay. He said, Jim, my only regret was I had no time to spend with my mother. She was in hospice, okay? So that's a perfect example of, uh, you know, business, a businessman, you know, uh, that couldn't take that downtime to, to spend with his mom, you know? And I urge everybody to support this. Thank you. Representative Guthrie. Thank you, Speaker. I wasn't going to get up and speak on this. I think it's a, I think it's a great bill, but... Um, you have to look at the bill. This, this, is, this says you can only collect this temporary benefit for four weeks. So it's not like somebody's going to be out of work for 40 weeks. It's a maximum in any given year of four weeks. This is an insurance policy that workers take out on themselves. The taxpayers aren't involved in it. And when you look at it from an, from an insurance perspective, it's an insurance policy. It's not a gift. They're paying for it. Thank you, Speaker. With Trillo. You know, it's amazing the difference of philosophies in, that, that, that's, that are in this room. And I try to understand everybody's philosophy. And I, and, you know, and I know that everybody's passionate about what they believe. And I accept that. Even though I disagree with it, I see it, I see it differently. I see the concept of what we're trying to do here. I, I think it's a great idea. It's a great concept. But you're not looking beyond the concept. You're not looking at the unintended consequences. The fact is that a lot of people today, if you give them a free pass that they, that they know they have in their wallet at any point to take four weeks off, they know somebody in their family that's sick. So I want to take a vacation tomorrow. You know what? My, uh, my sister's son is sick. I'll take four weeks off. It's, the bill needs to be redeveloped so that you can only take out maybe one or two people for any given person that needs to be taken care of. The, the bill is, is very bad the way, it, the way it's written right now, and it's set up for abuse of the process. I understand what we're trying to do, and I, and I support the idea of what we're trying to do. 
But the problem is, leaving it the way it is right now, you, you say it's not going to hurt small business. What happens with a company with two employees or three employees? Do you think they can really, supposing two of those employees have a sick person, they put the company out of business? You really need to rethink this legislation. Thank you. Representative Hearn. Thank you, Speaker. I hate to stand up and sound cranky on this bill, and I don't mean it. It's a well-intentioned bill. We've been in economic forums all session. Has this ever been one of the solutions that the business community has said, we need this to spur economic development in our state? It isn't. As well-intentioned as this piece of legislation is, we need to focus on the businesses that are here in the state and listen to them. I've heard from many business owners in my community saying, this will break us. The Chamber of Commerce is against this piece of legislation, and I urge you all to step back and say, for the economy and the businesses in our state, we can't go forward with this. Thank you, Speaker. Representative Costa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wasn't going to speak, but I just want to um, say one quick thing. That Rep. Ahern, you nailed it, spot on. The emails that I got, as well as everybody else has been getting, they've been coming in by the dozens of small business owners in this state asking us to oppose this. Everybody in this room is saying, we're for small business, we're for small business. This bill isn't for a small business. This bill is going to hurt the small business. This bill is going to hurt the employer that has two, three, four employees. So, I mean, it's, it's a great intended bill, like someone else said a little while ago, but it just should be recommitted. It should go back. It needs a little bit of work so everybody can, can support it. And we don't start, and all the emails will stop from the small businesses that are asking us not to support it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Representative Nunes for the second time. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, the comment was made that this, this helps families, and especially lower income families. It, one, one point that I wanted to make was if, if you're a family making 60, or if you're an employee making $61,000 a year, all right, you're paying $732 a year into TDI right now. If we enact this law, it's going to increase the amount you pay in every, every year, 800, uh, up to $854. So you're going to be paying another $80 a year into TDI based upon your $61,000 salary. All right? I guess, I guess the biggest problem I have is I'm, just, I'm sick of playing this, this whole Robin Hood game where we, we, we take from the, the rich and give to the poor. But this is like a reverse Robin Hood because we're taking from the poor and we're giving it to the poor. All right, if we really wanted to reform this system to help families, maybe we should calculate TDI on the amount of your payroll over $61,000 instead of the first $61,000. Then that would really help the lower income families. The way it is right now, all we're going to do is pass another $100 tax burden onto a low income family. So I, I do appreciate the intent of this bill, and I, I agree with the intent. I, I think that it's, it's a program that could have some, some real use and in, in help a lot of families that are in distress, caring, trying to balance their budgets, caring for a loved one. I, I, I agree with that, and I, I do appreciate that. I, I've been in that situation, and I, 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 I feel for those that are in that situation now. This is, just, this is not the fix for it, because we're passing the burden onto those who can least afford it. So I would, I, I, I'm not supporting this bill. Representative Baldelli Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I just have a, a question for the sponsor. Sponsor yield, she will yield, proceed. Uh, Rep. Kodia, can you just tell me in this language, does the employee need to give the employer a notice? 30 days notice before taking the leave. So it's not so like they can just... this is an illness, usually end of life, which has come about and everyone knows it and they're trying to either get a placement that will keep the apparent uh, safe with the care they need so that the... Um, family can go back to work. And please remember that when you collect this, you are not collecting your full pay. You're collecting about 50% of your pay. And for someone who's making 
40,000 a year. The daily cost for this insurance is 64 cents, less than a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee, if they should choose to do it. But there is, yes, there is, to your the short answer to your question. Thank you. May I continue? You may. Okay. Um, I just, I know there are a lot of mixed feelings on this legislation, and I'm a small business owner too, and my concern was that I could potentially have an employee that would call and, and tell me that they wouldn't be in for the next four weeks, and that would be problematic in our business. But I can also tell you that as the caregiver uh, to my father many years ago, I had the ability to and the flexibility through my employment where I could take time out of work so I could care for him, so my mother could go to work, so we would have coverage to take care of him and his illness. So fortunately, because of the certain employment that I had, I had that flexibility. But if I didn't, that would mean that my father would have been at home and we would have been relying every day on trying to figure out how we were going to maneuver to get someone to our house to care for him, to make sure he was medicated properly, to make sure he got to doctor's appointments or to dialysis, etc. So. Yes, it may be a burden of, of a small amount of money to the employees, but these are the very employees who may actually need that benefit. So when you're in that situation, it's extremely stressful when you have a sick parent or a sick child and you're trying to care for them. It creates a great amount of stress within the family and also stress to that person who's not feeling well because they never know who's going to be with them by their side taking care of them. It, it's, a, it's four weeks, four weeks potentially is, is not even enough for them. And I'm not saying that to increase it, but four weeks goes by very fast. So it's good to have a little bit of flexibility. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Lima. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I'm not going to reiterate the points on this floor. I wasn't even going to get up, but I want to tell you something. From somebody who personally had to take care of a loved one who was passing away, I don't care how much money, jobs, whatever, that all comes and go. A loved one doesn't. It's a one-time shot to be there for them. And if this needs tightening up, which I can't imagine someone abusing it, but if it happens, let's come back next year and fix it. Let's do it. Thank you. Representative Jackhardt. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my experience with uh, you know, TDI is that if you're making around $60,000 or less and you go out on it, you're actually taking home every bit of what you made before. You may be getting paid 50 or 60 percent of your actual pay, like Representative Codier said, but it's tax free. So your take home is the same or possibly even a little more. And for that reason, I think that this does have the potential for abuse. Um, if it were to pay 50% of your wages, now there's no incentive to abuse this. And I think it would be a lot more palatable to me and to uh, the business owners uh, as well. So uh, right now, I I'm going to uh, vote against this. And I, I just think, uh, you know, it, it's not quite ready. Maybe, maybe next year after some of these issues are addressed. Thank you. Representative Diaz. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I raise and support of this bill. And the reason I, I rise and support of this bill is because three reasons. One, that is very important to me, take care of my family. And the reason the majority of people work is support the family. In difficult time, we would like to be around to those we love. I'm taking care of my mother. She's 83 years old. And hopefully, she will never need the help. But by the time maybe something happened, I would like to be there because the only daughter she has in the United States is me. And I would like to take care of my mother. The temporary um, disability insurance benefit that we're talking today is only once a year. The bill is very clear and say you will have benefit of four weeks only once a year. Yes, somebody may abuse of the system like if some people may do with other benefits that stay granted to people. But I also 
This bill say it's only to immediate family, nothing to be with nephew, niece, or anybody else, to your mother, husband, or your partner. For that reason, I urge you to vote for this bill. I know it's important to support the small business in our state, but I believe family comes first. Thank you. Representative Morgan, you've spoken twice. I know I have an amendment, and I just I was waiting for it to come up. That's why I didn't say anything before. So I know you're mad at me, but I need to put it in. Okay. <laughs> You are twisting me up up here, aren't you? <laughs> I, okay. Remember, it is a different item, so proceed. Okay, it is LC 02024 slash 4. Representative Morgan moves passage of amendment LC 02024 slash 4, seconded by Representative Costa, Representative Gia Russo. Moved and seconded. Explanation, please, Representative. Well, it appears that you're determined to pass this even though I think it's really bad for the business climate and it's bad for people who want jobs. But I thought we could try to make it better. And right now, the, Fed, uh, the Family Medical Leave Act applies only to companies with 50 or more employees. And the rationale for that is that if you're smaller than that, it's much harder to make up for that hole in your workforce. It's hard to get that temporary worker in for four or six weeks. Um, and, and, and your business suffers because you are running then at, at less than, than full octane. So the amendment um, makes our expansion of temporary disability insurance match the FMLA. Um, in other words, that it would only apply to um, businesses with 50 or more employees. There you go. And I hope you vote for it because it's a really good amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Representative Cody on the amendment. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I urge my colleagues to not pass this amendment. As I have said, I have spoken to many small business owners in Pawtucket. They tell me certainly having, being able to give this leave, they can cover the four weeks and they won't have to search for another employee, retrain them, they'll come back ready to work. Um, this in effect would leave an awful lot of people out if it has to be a business of 50 or more and I urge my colleagues to please defeat the amendment. Leader Nube on the amendment. Yeah, thank you Mr. Speaker. First I want to thank Representative Hearn for her comments earlier because they echoed something I've been thinking for the last, well, several months, but particularly the last few weeks. You know, my firm recently had one of our paralegals break her leg. She's out on medical leave. It's an inconvenience for us, but we're able to cover because we are large. We have about 100 some odd employees. If you employ, if you're a small firm, and I've been in a small firm before, I was in a firm once with just three attorneys and one staff member. If our secretary had gone out for four weeks, it would have been a major financial drain on the business. It's common sense. Representative Gallison said at the outset, this bill will not hurt business. Of course it's gonna hurt business. How can you say that with a straight face? That doesn't mean it's necessarily a terrible idea because there's a counter argument a lot of you have made about trying to help workers too. But to stand up here and say this is not going to impact business is just ludicrous. And Representative Hearn is 100% correct. This is supposed to be the year of boosting the economy and helping small business. We had forums, we had press conferences. What have we done here on July 2nd at 5.02 in the afternoon? Absolutely nothing so far as I can tell. We haven't passed really a single piece of pro-small business legislation. So at least this amendment minimizes the damage to business. The larger companies can easily, more easily absorb the cost if something happens. Small businesses cannot. So please support the amendment. Was that Ferry on the amendment? Okay, so it's okay to ha for small businesses not to be hurt, but it's okay for the employee to suffer. Okay, I just did some math, and I hope it's right, because I looked up disability. Temporary disability. It says you get 4.62% of your highest base period. Please help me if I'm wrong on this now. So if you make $500 a week, 
for your quarter, your highest quarter, that comes out to $300 a week TDI. And if you're getting 50% of that, it's $150 a week. That's what we're talking about then. That's how it works. 4.62% of your highest quarter, and if anybody from D... But it's helping my employees that need the help also because they have a sick person at home. What do you want them to do? Go home, not work, not get any money, suffer? It's like, I don't, I don't understand. It, it helps business because it helps my employees. Peter Newberry on the amendment. I, I, I'm sorry, Representative Frey, I have great respect for you, but this is not about just the employees. It doesn't help employees when businesses don't open in the first place or when their costs are too high and they go under. It's not about what they're being paid when they go out. It's about the fact that they're not there. There's a cost in that. I don't know what the costs are at your particular business. I'm not going to speculate, but I can tell you that a small business with a couple of employees has major issues. All this amendment does is at least confine the damage to companies that can maybe afford it. Representative Lima, on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I rise in opposition to this amendment. If you have an employee who has to make a choice between a job and a loved one who's on their deathbed, what do you think that employee is going to do? I would think they're going to go with taking care of the loved one. If they stay on that job, guess what? They're going to be miserable and distracted and angry thinking about the person who's dying at home because this company only employs 48 people. At least this person will be back in four weeks and grateful, and they'll have a temporary worker there in the meantime. If the person leaves the job, who are they going to have? They're not going to have anybody. So I urge you to defeat this amendment. Thank you. Whip Trillo on the amendment. Lita Mattiello on the amendment. Yes, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very practical reason why I'm going to ask you to all vote against this amendment. The cost of this program is borne by the employee. If you pass this amendment, all those folks that work for big companies with more than 50 uh, employees are going to have access to it, and while employees that work for smaller companies aren't going to have access for it, and they're contributing to it. So it's inequitable on its face. Whether you work for a large company or a small company, you should have the same or similar uh, benefits. But because of the inherent inequity in the amendment, I ask you to vote against it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There are no further lights. Shall the amendment prevail? Clerk is unlocked the machine. All those in favor of the amendment vote green. All those opposed vote red. Clerk, please lock the machine. Ten in the affirmative, 58 in the negative. The amendment fails. We're back on the act as in, as in the act. There are no further lights. Shall the act prevail? Clerk is unlocked the machine. All those in favor green. All those opposed red. Clerk, please lock the machine. 49 in the affirmative, 18 in the negative. The act prevails.